Federal government partners Japan on $200 million power transmission expansion program. Just as AFCFTA Secretariat partners Afria Zimbang to manage base fund of AFCFTA adjustment fund. Hong Kong Hang Seng Index leads gains as Asia markets rise. Plus, oil prices nudge up after API data shows surprise drop in U.S. stocks. The program is Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. The African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA Secretariat, and African Export Import Bank, Afriexim Bank, in Cairo, have signed an agreement relating to the management of the base fund of the AFCFTA Adjustment Fund. The fund will support African countries and the private sector to effectively participate in the new trading environment established under the AFCFTA. The agreement was signed by Professor Benedict Orama, President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Afriexim Bank and Wamkele Mene, Secretary General of AFCFTA Secretariat, in the presence of other stakeholders. The AFCFTA Secretariat and Afriexim Bank were mandated by the African Union Summit of Heads of State and Government, as well as AFCFTA Council of Ministers responsible for trade to establish the AFCFTA Adjustment Fund to support AFCFTA state partners. This is to adjust to new liberalized and integrated trading environment established under AFCFTA agreement. The adjustment fund consists of a base fund, a general fund, and a credit fund. The base fund will consist of contributions from state parties, grants and technical assistance funds to address tariff revenue losses as tariffs are progressively eliminated. Speaking during the signing ceremony, Wam Kelimene, Secretary General of AFCFTA Secretariat, stressed the importance of the adjustment fund as one of the instruments designed to support the implementation of the AFCFTA agreement and assist AFCFTA state parties to deal with short-term tariff revenue losses as they dismantle tariffs and implement the agreement. <clears throat> The Tabo Mbeki High Level Panel Report on Illicit Financial Flows in Africa is raising concerns within the African finance industry. These concerns were raised at a dialogue on the status of adoption of the report put together by the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center. The panel report estimates that Africa loses excess of $50 billion yearly to illicit financial flows, which means Africa has lost more than $1 trillion over the past 50 years. This, they say, undermines development in all spheres. Points to the very importance of having good governance, having things run properly, having regulatory systems that are not exploitative or are not used to harass business people. The second was weak regulatory structures. This is self-explanatory in the sense that if you, the regulators don't have the skills or the resources to be able to look after their sectors properly, um, they're not able, therefore, to track illicit financial flow. The people that are supposed to be paying taxes, they are not paying. And a lot of them, they get fraudulent tax waiver, tax holiday, at the expense of development. Special advisor to the President on Economic Matters, Office of the Vice President, Hadeemi Dipolu, who dissected the recommendations of the panel, suggested that government and development partners should play their statutory roles judiciously to account for spendings, to meet the sustainable goals before 2030, and cripple activities of fraudsters, they say financial leakages must be blocked. Public access to budget information should be allowed, and the United Nations must play its role in carbon illicit flows. 25,000 rice farmers are participating in the 2021 to 2022 dry season farming in Gombe State under the federal government's CBN Anko Boros project. Abbas Maikanu reports that women received special recognition for their previous performance.
It is not coincident that farmers in Gombe State excel in rice production among the states of the Federation with over 140,000 metric tons presented by the state recently in Abuja Rice Pyramids exhibition. The farmers hard work, determination and commitment coupled with the intervention of the CBN Anko Boros program of the federal government put Gombe State ahead of its contemporaries in rice production. In yet another ceremony to flag of 2021-2022 dry season farming impulse disbursement, 25,000 farmers have been earmarked to benefit from the program. The BM witness, we are all happy. Gombe is the best, we are leading. We have submitted 124,020 tons, metric tons of fatty rice. Women received over 1,000 slots as a result of their excellent performance in the previous program. If a woman farm, the family will not be hungry. Those living around will not be hungry. If you see me before, I was not like this. But because of this program and the project, I was able to have some piece of land. There are widows among them. There are single mothers, you understand. And there are some that are even married who want to participate in agriculture. For those of them that have single mothers and widows who don't have anything to do, this is going to provide a lot of livelihood for them. With the coming of this president, boosting farming activities have been a policy trust and we appreciate these efforts. Highlights of the ceremony include presentation of awards of recognition to distinguished personalities. In Gombe, Abbas Nekanu. Recently, Nigeria has unveiled a national development plan designed to shape the country's development between 2021 and 2025. The federal government says the plan aims to tackle certain challenges in the country and help the government's plan of economic rejuvenation, including alleviating poverty and strengthening industrialization. One key aspect of the plan is prioritizing rural areas, expanding public investment in agricultural sector to 1.46 trillion naira. How can this be achieved is our focus on the program. And joining me to talk on the subject matter is the National President, Carrot Growers, Processors and Marketers Association of Nigeria. He's no other person but Ambassador Adeiri Bibe John Ade Korede. You are welcome to Business Express. Thank you. Ambassador. The new National Development Plan targets to cultivate 42 million hectares of land from 34 million hectares of arable land. Is it enough, considering the country's growing population? Yes, um, I would say it's far much more than enough um, because Nigeria is blessed with a total land mass of 91.1 million uh, 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 land mass, and then also it's also supported with 1.3 million water bodies, as well as 3.14 uh, million hectares of uh, ir uh, irrigatable land. You know, if you check countries like like Vietnam and and uh, Thailand, you will see that Thailand only only has uh, 17 uh, hectares, uh, 17 million uh, hectares of arable land 
in its in its country and it's feeding the world as well as vietnam vietnam only has uh, seven million hectares of land and as well is doing the same thing so with 34 million hectares um, nigeria is good to go not only in the area of crop production but as well in uh, um, fisheries in uh, uh, animals boundary and the likes of others so nigeria is good to go with 34 hectares the only It is good practice to introduce technology to, to use this land. The land is far, far much more better than other countries that is doing better all around the world. Okay, with the examples you've given, the instances given with Thailand and other countries out there, is it about the deployment of technology? And how can we borrow this technology to be utilized in country to get the kind of yields they are getting out there? Um, well, I, I, I go back to Thailand because I think I stayed there for about seven years. Um, what they actually introduced, you know, some, some farmers only has one plot of land and they could as well farm, uh, you know, because just with the introduction of technology, agronomical practice, like uh, using the best uh, nano technology that is out there that can help you increase not only the yield, but also to help improve the soil. So, um, one of the challenges that we have here in Nigeria is there are no uh, service providers. You know, when I mean service providers, there are no, uh, um, you know, the technical know-how on the soil test, you know, the seed, the seed, the type of uh, seed variety, using good seed variety, not just buying grains in the market and planting. So, you know, adopting these agronomical practices could actually enhance the yield per hectare of any farmers. Okay, let's take a look at rural setting in the scheme of things. Where is the place of the rural development in achieving food security? Well, um, the, rural, the rural area plays a very huge role, massive role in uh, the economic uh, development and its policies. Because this is the area where we go to farm. This is the area where we, we, we farm this produce and we just pick and take it out of these locations. And, you know, the, this, this will continue because um, in the rural area, you know, they, they lack so many basic amenities, social amenities, like not having power, electricity, not having, uh, you know, uh, not being exposed to global trend. You know, and this is the only people that we have to feed the 300 and something million population of Nigeria. You know, and we are not bringing them into consensus. So I think the rural area should should be, should, you know, we should reconsider. Government should bring out policies that can help domesticalizing, uh, you know, processing plants. When I mean processing, not just to produce this farm produce, to add value from source. Then you can then take it out, maybe a semi semi produce. You take it out of um, this uh, rural area to the urban area. To, for, for marketing and export purposes. So I think in my own idea, I, I think if Nigerian government can take a, a closer look into the, the rural area, you know, because you see, you still have this, uh, or, or, uh, the, the massive trooping in of the people in the rural area entering the, the urban, urban area areas, urban and, and then areas. creating like an abandonment in the, in the rural area. And that is what we are having today, why we have the insecurity issues in, in the country. And the only way we can tackle this is to, is to focus more on agriculture and not just, to, not just agricultural produce, but also the derivatives from agriculture. We can add value. You see, for example, what happened in Kano, you know, the, um, what, what is it called? The onion farmers, they have their farm produce in the market in no time because of lack of storage, because of lack of uh, so many things. You know, the, the, the farmers who have a huge loss. So now these farmers in the rural area cannot feed their families. And in so doing, you know, they get exposed to, to, to all these guys who are coming into them for to give them one, one, one stipend or the other to make trouble in the land. Okay, let's, let's move from the need for sufficiency to having enough for export. 36.12% share of agricultural export is the target of the plan. What do we need to do to achieve this target? Okay, um, I think uh, what we actually need to do 
to achieve this this um, target. Number one is to introduce rural smart cities. Mm. When I mean rural smart. Okay, Adi are you still with us? Cities, uh, you okay. know, uh, make uh, globalization in the in the rural rural area by introducing uh, industrial plants, industrial facilities where you manufacture a semi produce urban area. Well, it seems we're having connection problems. Okay, what, what I'm actually trying to say is in the area of this same rural area, this can really help our export uh, volume in the sense that we need to try and adopt, you know, create a smart city in the rural, rural area. You know, if you really check it, uh, the manufacturing companies that we have around Nigeria, those who, who add value to, to raw materials they get from this uh, rural area are mostly in the cities. So, you know, you have to go and produce in the rural area and then try and transport it into the urban area. Now, if we could have what we call the, 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 the rural uh, resettlement manufacturing facility, where the gov federal government is going to concentrate in this area, provide electricity for them, and let them have access to the road. If we can have this in either crop, because if you take, I still go back to uh, countries like uh, Vietnam and, and Thailand, you come to see that there's no crop or probably no commodity that won't add to its gross GDP. Now, you see there, there are some particular crop in Thailand, just one of it is sold for one million naira. Just one crop out of the old tree is called king of fruit, durian. All these kind of fruit, we don't have them here. We can introduce them. If we can, we can encourage the rural settlers, we can, we can go there, create a smart city that will be more conducive for, for the manufacturers. And in so doing, there will be social responsiveness from these manufacturers, whether you are local guys or you are, an, you are a foreign person, to invest in Nigeria. You know, if they can go to the, the rural, rural settlement and have these manufacturing facilities to have semi-produce uh, semi to export to the African region. Okay. Mr. Adekorede, looking at the recommendations that you've put forward now, it is so clear that uh, it's massive. The investment is massive. It is a huge investment. And it's always been government, government. We need government to do this. We need government to do that. Where can the private sector come in in terms of providing credit and in terms of attracting investment into this particular sector, talking about the agri sector? Well, um, the, this project cannot be complete without the private sector. But that not being said, we still would need the federal government to put some facility in place. We, we would need them to you know, create incentives. If incentives are introduced into uh, agro-produce, uh, you know, if incentives can be introduced, you know, cut the tax of these guys taking this, uh, encouraging the local production of agro-produce, you know, if we can introduce incentives, the federal government will, will introduce modernization of storage facilities in key locations. We, this can encourage private sector to come in because before any private sector can invest into anything, it does its appraisals. So if the, the cost, the, the green concern is huge, you know, they also will measure the risk. So if federal government wants to really do well in this area, they really need to do well in the area of you know, introducing incentives. The same thing happened in, in uh, Brazil, you know, when the government of Brazil uh, encouraged the local, in, local investors to come into agriculture. So you introduce incentives to individual companies, you know, telling them you are going to cut this tax, you are going to take out this tariff, you are going to do this, you are going to do that. This will really help them. And also um, for the, the, the banking sector, they really need to um, uh, support the, 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 private, the private guys by allowing them access to loans. Uh, right now, agri loan, I think, is about 5.1% uh, interest yeah. rate. So if we, the federal government, with this effort it has already introduced, can identify sectors 
in there's no there is no agro produce that is not important or that cannot add value to the nation gross GDP. But it needs to introduce incentives that can encourage private sector to come in into the sector. Well, Adeiri Bigbe, John Adekorede, thank you so very much for sharing your thoughts with us at this particular point in time. Thank you very much. Let's now see prices of commodities. The federal government says it would partner the Japan International Cooperation Agency to implement a $200 million electricity transmission expansion program in Lagos and Ogun states. The Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliu, said the aim of the program was to expand the transmission network in the identified states so as to effectively support industries in the southwest. He said this while receiving the Japan International Corporation Agency, JICA delegation in his office in Abuja, noting that power transmission was a major stake of government targeted at raising operational capacity, particularly in industrial areas. Aliu explained that the consultancy services for line route studies, environmental and social impact assessment for the proposed JICA transmission projects in Lagos and Ogun State had been completed. The transmission, rehabilitation, and expansion programs is to be carried out by the Transmission Company of Nigeria through a loan of $200 million. The loan being obtained from the Japan International Cooperation Agency will be used to provide about 203 kilometer high voltage transmission lines and six high level voltage substations. Oil prices, oil prices nudge up on Wednesday following two sessions of losses after industry data showed an unexpected drop in U.S. crude and fuel stocks of certain concerns of a possible rise in supplies from Iran Reuters report. Next is the global market. Hello and welcome to the global market review. World stock markets rallied on Wednesday, putting aside worries about rising interest rates for now to take some comfort from positive headlines coming out of Ukraine and the upbeat earnings. European stocks advanced tracking global gains as investors awaited key U.S. inflation data due to be released on Thursday. The DAX climbed 1.53%, with London's FTSE topping 0.71%, and Francis Cat 40 gaining 1.4%. Stocks in Asia Pacific also rose in Wednesday trade, with stocks in Hong Kong leading gains regionally. The Hansen Index in Hong Kong jumped 2.06% to close at 24,829.99. The Shanghai Composite also rose 0.79%, while in Japan, the Nikkei 225 climbed 1.08%. 
U.S. stock futures were higher in early trading as investors prepare for another round of corporate earnings. Dow futures rose 0.67 percent, S&P 500 appreciated by 0.65 percent, and Nasdaq 100 climbed 0.79 percent. African markets, like their global counterparts, ticked higher this Wednesday with all stocks posting gains. South Africa gained 0.67%, Tunisia rose 0.15%, while Namibia topped 0.04%. And that's Global Market Review. I am Neka Oko. Thank you, Neka. And from there, Business Express returns Thursday by 9.30 a.m. I am Benny Adams saying stay safe.